it's Lana from Lana Under Pressure and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make instant pot Cuban cheesecake flan or flan de queso. Now I converted this recipe from my husband's grandmother's uh, cheesecake flan, flan de queso recipe and it's one of my most viewed recipes on my blog not just because it's really delicious it's like a food of the heavens but also because one, it's a really great beginner recipe. It comes together in the blender. So um, for first time cheesecake makers, it's really great because you don't have to worry about over mixing it. Also, it's gluten free. There's no gluten in it whatsoever. And third, when you unmold it, it already comes out decorated. It has this beautiful mirror uh, sugar glaze like a flan would have. So the minute you unmold it, it's ready to eat. It's, it's just wonderful and really easy to make. Before we get started cooking, I just wanted to show you what I like to make my flans and cheesecake flans and a lot of other things in the Instant Pot with. What I like to use is what uh, they call a flanera. Now this is traditionally what flans are made in, but it works really great for the Instant Pot because it's about six inches round, so it fits per perfectly in your six quart or eight quart Instant Pot. And um, it's just really a high, kind of like a high sided cake pan, but it comes with its own top that fits on just like that. And it has these clasps that just hold the top down and that keeps any of the water or moisture from going in. And it works really, really great in the Instant Pot. I use it a lot, not just for flans, but for other things. If you don't have a flanera, um, you can use a high-sided uh, six-inch cake pan and that will work and you just cover that with foil. Now this recipe actually is going to start on the stove because we're going to go ahead and make the sugar caramel that's going to uh, line the inside of the flanera or your pan. And that's what we're going to then pour the cheesecake mixture into. So what you're going to need for that is you're going to need two thirds cup of regular uh, white sugar. You're going to need a quarter cup of water plus an extra two tablespoons of water. You're going to need a silicone spatula and a small uh, saucepan for the stove. You also want to have your flanera ready. And now all of these things, you really need to have them ready ahead of time because it's going to go very quickly uh, once it gets started melting. And you don't want to have to stop because the sugar will burn very quickly. It's easy to make, but it can go from perfect to burnt in seconds. So I'm going to show you how to caramelize sugar using the wet method, which I think is the easiest for beginners. And for that, we're going to start with a quarter cup of water and you're going to pour it into a cold saucepan. Then you're going to take two thirds cup of sugar, just plain white sugar, and you're going to pour that into the middle of the saucepan, trying not to get any of the sugar crystals to touch the edge of the saucepan. Then you're going to take your silicone spatula and you're going to just gently stir or pat or move the sugar around just so that all the sugar crystals are moistened. You're not necessarily trying to stir the sugar into the water, you're just making sure that all of the sugar is moistened. So we're not trying to dissolve it at this point. And I like to use a patty motion, I think that works the best. But however you want, perfect. Now we're gonna turn the stove on to medium heat and we're gonna start to boil the sugar. So as it's coming to a boil, my stove and pan tend to not heat up evenly. So what I do is when I see that there's certain sugar that's not melting, I'll just move the pot around so that it heats up in the different places. And as the sugar completely dissolves, then it's going to start to turn a light brown straw color. And you can see that it's only doing it in one spot, so I'll just move gently the pot around to heat up the other side. If you feel like you have to lower the heat a little bit, you can do so. And you're just waiting for all of the sugar to turn a nice straw light color. At no time are you gonna use a spoon or the spatula to stir. So now that it's all a straw color, I'm gonna go ahead and start swirling. And I'm gonna use a swirling motion. So I'm not gonna use a spoon, but I'm gonna use a swirling motion. And this is going to get it to brown evenly. And I'm just gonna keep swirling and check it and I'm looking for a nice deep golden color just like that so I'm going to turn off the heat and now I'm going to add my two tablespoons of water and as that bubbles up it's going to incorporate into the sugar water mixture and I'm just going to swirl here and once the water is incorporated not only does that stop the browning but it also gets any of the other sugar to dissolve, evens it out, 
and now we're ready to pour. And as you see, perfect color. And that's the color you're looking for. So now you're going to take your flaneta and you wanna make sure that you're using a pot holder and you're going to carefully pour your hot sugar into the flaneta. And the sugar is very hot, it'll burn you, so you gotta be really careful. And wearing pot holders, you're just going to swirl the sugar around so that it coats the bottom of the flaneta or whatever pan you're using. And then you're going to tilt it and you want the sugar to come up about an inch on the sides and you're just going to slowly, carefully tilt it. Now you got to be very careful and make sure, you know, you don't want it to spill out. So don't, you don't want it to get all the way to the edge, just about an inch up. And you're going to tilt and swirl until you're forming a nice coating around the flaneta, just like that. Now that we've gone ahead and made our caramel sugar, our heated sugar, and we've poured it into the flaneta, and we've tilted it around, and you want it, again, to come up at least about an inch, but be very careful. Um, now you're gonna go ahead and set the flaneta with the sugar aside, and we're gonna get to making the cheesecake mixture. Now what makes this a great beginner recipe is that it all comes together in a blender. You don't have to worry about over mixing it like I had said before. However, there are a few, a few things that you do need to remember to do. Now as far as the ingredients, there are very few. Um, you're gonna have two eggs. You need one whole egg and one egg yolk. You're gonna use a teaspoon of vanilla. You're gonna need two 14 ounce cans of sweetened condensed milk. You need two eight ounce packages of uh, cream cheese and you need a fourth of a cup of whole milk. Now, what's really important for this recipe and really any cheesecake or flan recipe is that all of the ingredients come to room temperature. Now, a great tip for baking is to bring my eggs to room temperature quickly without having to wait an hour letting them sit out. I take a cup of hot water that I just get straight from the tap. I don't boil it or microwave it or anything. You just want hotter, you know, warm water. And um, I gently place my eggs inside of that and I let that sit for just about five minutes. Um, and that'll bring the eggs gently to room temperature. For the cream cheese, what I do is I place it in a microwave safe bowl and I microwave it a few seconds at a time on uh, medium power, like 50% power. And that's just to bring, just to take the chill off. And that usually takes less than a minute. And for the milk, I do the same thing. I warm it up on 50% uh, power just for a few seconds in the microwave and that brings it to temperature. Just make sure that you don't overheat them. It's better for it to be a little bit cool than too hot. But that way you don't have to let it sit out for like an hour uh, ahead of time. You can go ahead and use them right away. Now that all my ingredients are about at room temperature, I'm gonna go ahead and add them to the blender. So first I'm gonna go ahead and add the two blocks of cream cheese. And my blender is pretty good, um, but if you want, you can cut them up to make it easier to blend. Also, if you don't have a blender, you can use a hand mixer and that's fine. You just have to make sure you incorporate everything really well. So I have my cream cheese. I have my one whole egg and one egg yolk. Just like that. I'm gonna do one teaspoon of vanilla, and I like to use the Dominican vanilla extract. Um, I find it's a lot cheaper, but I can't really taste the difference, and I think it tastes really good. And that's what my grandmother used in most of her cooking. So just a teaspoon of vanilla. And then we're gonna go ahead and add next the two cans of sweetened condensed milk. Now we're gonna add the two cans, but you're gonna hold on and don't throw the cans away just yet. So we're gonna pour that in, pour in the second can. And now, instead of adding the milk straight into the blender, it's a little trick that my grandmother showed me, is if you take whatever liquid you have, and you can do this in any recipe when you're using a can of something, um, you take the liquid and you pour it into the can and then you mix it around to get as much of the uh, contents out as possible. And then we're gonna pour it into the second can. And my husband's grandmother always did this when she was making this recipe. And for some reason, um, I had done it once before and I didn't do this, 
and it made a difference. So I don't know why, I, there's something happens, uh, but it makes a difference. So from now on, every time I make it, I make sure to do this step. And go ahead and add all of that liquid and the rest of the can into the blender. And then another ingredient uh, that I add is just a pinch of salt. So that's like about an eighth of a teaspoon, not a lot. I don't even uh, measure it, just a little bit. Add that right in. And then we're gonna go ahead and blend. Now we're ready to go ahead and blend. And first we're gonna pulse it just to get it mixed. And then we're gonna mix it on medium speed until it's really incorporated. And now there might be a couple of times where you have to stop and scrape down the sides and then go ahead and mix it again. And again, you don't have to worry about over mixing this. So we're gonna pulse it. And then I'm gonna set it to medium and I'm gonna go ahead and blend it. So I just blended that for about 30 seconds and I'm gonna stop and scrape down the sides just to make sure all of the ingredients are mixing well. I'm gonna replace the top and I'm gonna blend again for a few more seconds. So now our mixture is done blending and we're gonna go ahead and pour it right into the flanator, right over on top of our sugar. And now the sugar is crystallized, you can see, um, and we're just gonna pour that right on top. Now you wanna leave at least an inch of space from the top of the flanator when you pour it. So you may not use all the mixture, and if you want, you can go ahead and save that mixture and make smaller, smaller cheesecake flans. I've done that and it's really good. So we're just gonna pour that right on top. And you might hear the sugar crack, and that's okay. Just till you have about an inch from the top. Perfect. And I do have about oh, half a cup of the mixture left, and that's normal. I'm just gonna save that in the fridge and I'm gonna make smaller ones later. So now that we've poured it in and the mixture is about an inch from the top, we're gonna go ahead and place the top of our flanera on and clasp the sides. And we're ready to prepare the Instapot. So for this recipe, you wanna have about four cups, three to four cups of water in your Instant Pot. And this is my six quart Instant Pot. And you want to do that because you want the water to come at least halfway up the side of your pan. And that takes about four cups of water. So then you're going to set your flanera or your pan onto a trivet. And you're going to place this gently into your Instant Pot. And again, you want to look to see that the water comes up about halfway, a third to halfway up. So once you've added your flanera onto your trivet, and you have the water coming up about halfway, a third to halfway, you're gonna go ahead and place the lid on your instant pot. Turn it, you're gonna press, uh, you're gonna turn the valve to seal, and then you're going to uh, pressure cook this high pressure for 25 minutes, and then you're gonna let it natural release for 30 minutes. So on this instant pot, and this is my smart instant pot, uh, you'd press manual, and you bring it down to 25 minutes and it'll start by itself and it'll count down from 25 minutes then it'll count back up once it's done to 30 and then you're going to go ahead and release the rest of the pressure now once it's cooked for the 25 minutes on high pressure and then sat for 30 minutes and all the pressure has released you're going to go ahead and open it now the pressure will have already natural released way before the 30 minutes, but it is important to let it sit for that entire 30 minutes because the residual heat is gonna continue cooking the cheesecake flan. So now the 30 minutes is up, and we're gonna go ahead and open it. Okay, and it's still hot, so you're gonna use your oven mitts, and that's where the handles of the trivet come in handy. Now once we've taken it out of the Instant Pot, um, I like to go ahead and take a paper towel and just dry off the moisture on the top so that uh, when you open it up, none of that moisture goes inside. And it's still hot, but you're going to go ahead and open it up to make sure that it's cooked. And what you're looking for is you want it to have a slight jiggle when you move it in the middle. Perfect. 
And you can also either use a toothpick and insert it in the middle and, and it, it should come out pretty clean. Or you can use a thermometer and test and you want it to be 180 degrees in the center. And this one's perfect. So once you check that it's ready and the temperature is right or the, th the toothpick comes out clean, you're going to let it sit and transfer it on a baking rack just like this uncovered for about an hour. Uh, but we're gonna cover it with clean rack, then we're gonna put it in the uh, refrigerator for at least six hours, but overnight is better. So now that the uh, cheesecake flan has sat overnight, this one sat overnight in the fridge, um, but again, at least six hours, but overnight is better, we need to unmold it. What I like to do is I like to put the flanera, the whole thing on top of uh, the trivet that comes with the Instant Pot, and then I'm going to dip it into uh, a bowl of hot water keep the plastic wrap on it but you're just gonna dip that just like that into the hot water and you're gonna let it sit for just a little bit and that will help loosen um, the sugar underneath so when you flip it over it'll release better okay and once we've done that now you can take the plastic wrap off and then take a sharp knife and you're gonna run it around the edge and try to make it as close to the edge as possible. Okay. So now we're ready to unmold. And you, you can use anything to turn it over on if you have a really nice plate. Um, this is a plate that has a bit of an edge. You want something that has an edge so that any of the extra sugar that has melted around it won't fall off. Um, but you can use a plate. You can also use a pie pan. A nine inch pie pan works really well. So you're gonna take whatever it is that you want to turn it on to, and you don't want to move it after, so make sure this is what you want to serve it on. You're going to put it upside down, and then you're going to flip it, just like that. So now we flipped it over onto our serving plate, and <clears throat> what you're going to do is gently lift it up to see if it unmold, but if it doesn't, no worries. So you can take, and this is a great tip for anything that needs help unmolding, you can take a hair dryer on hot and you're just going to um, run the hot heat around the top of it and that's going to help um, loosen the sugar. Alright, so that might take a few minutes, it can take up to five minutes, just take your time. You might want to tap on the top a little bit, um, but eventually it'll start to, you'll feel it start to unmold. And just gently lift it up because it makes a suction, so you just want to gently lift it up. Perfect. And there you go. It comes out just like that, beautiful with a beautiful mirror glaze, and it's ready to serve right away. And it's super creamy and delicious, easy to make. Amazing. It has the creaminess of che uh, cream cheese, but it has the flavor of flan. Absolutely fantastic. Gluten-free, easy, flan de queso. Hope you enjoyed my video.